of supporting this excellent private member's bill. I call the Honourable Chris Farquhar. Oh, oh, Madam Speaker, can I just acknowledge, um, first of all, as we do on um, Members' Day, um, uh, the member uh, for having the bill pulled uh, from the ballot. Um, this is uh, obviously the second uh, of her um, bills that is being uh, on the, on the uh, order paper today. Uh, unfortunately, she was um, unlucky with the result of the first one, and I'm sorry to say she's going to be unlucky with the result uh, of this one too. Um, can I just spend um, some time giving a little bit of context to, the dis to this debate in the five minutes uh, allotted to me? Um, because uh, the last time patents were, uh, the patent legislation was amended uh, in this House was 2013. And if I, my memory serves me correct, um, that was when the opposition uh, was the government. Uh, and if they thought it was such a great idea to introduce second tier patents uh, into the New Zealand realm of IP, then maybe uh, they should have done it then. Um, and I think there was probably a reason for them not doing it at that stage uh, because of the fact that, um, as has been proved across the Tasman, a uh, second-tier patent system across the Tasman and in other uh, like nations have proved to be completely and utterly ineffective. So while giving the member credit uh, for uh, the ambition of trying to get this uh, to uh, the point of it becoming law, um, first of all, it won't. Uh, and it won't probably because of the same reasons that her government back in 2013 saw fit not to introduce a second tier uh, patent system. What we do know about the previous government in terms of its uh, ambition uh, for innovation was that it was quite happy for the um, um, levels of um, R&D spending here in New Zealand to languish at about 1.3 per cent of GDP while the average for other like nations in the OECD set at 2.4 per cent. But what I can say to that point in terms of what question that I would expect to hear from the opposition, what are you going to do about it, uh, is that I'm very happy to say that my colleague sitting to my left, the Honourable Megan Woods, has taken action to increase that amount and saw in fit to have this government introduce $1 billion worth of R&D tax credits to take the level of investment higher than the previous government to help grow this economy to ensure that the businesses that do want to make sure that we are internationally competitive will get the support to do that. And I actually think that's a concrete measure to make sure that our businesses that want to be innovative and more internationally competitive do get the assistance uh, that, they, that they deserve. Um, Mr. Madam Speaker, there have been a number of companies who have spoken out actually against this bill since uh, it was pulled from the ballot. One, I think, of, of most note uh, is one of our rather large exporters, Fisher & Parkle, uh, who said, not only should we not do this, that if it is introduced, it will make things harder for them as one of our large exports and, and, and make them less competitive and hand competitive advantage to their overseas-based competitors. So if the, if the opposition wants to hand uh, an advantage to our overseas-based competitors to one of our largest exporters in New Zealand, Fresher and Pocket, then by all means put pieces of legislation like this in the biscuit tin, because it is going to prove that in a very short amount of time since they have been removed from office, they have become out of touch of the real needs of those companies that want to help grow the economy. And this piece of legislation, Madam, Madam Speaker, will not help do that. So I just want to reiterate the good work that this government is doing. Right. Taking a, a, a paltry level of R&D um, spending from 1.3 to closer to the average of 2.4 uh, in the OECD. If you look at the figures, Madam Speaker, I think it was in about, I want to get this right, I'm going to make sure I check my notes. In 2012, New Zealand ranked 13th as the 13th most innovative country in the world. Now, in 2017, based on the 2017 uh, figures, we slipped to 22nd. So the previous government, who are now the opposition, really need to start putting their money where their mouth is if they're going to start introducing 
uh, pieces of legislation that want to increase the levels of innovation in New Zealand because their track record and the evidence of their track record and their ranking in innovation stakes speaks to a different story than the one they spouted for nine very long years. Um, I just, before I call the next speaker, um, I just will confirm that the um, times have gone out. Uh, however, I have them here. Five minute speech, I'll give you a bell at one minute. Madam Speaker. I call for Fletcher Tavita. Oh, thank you so much, Madam Speaker, for this opportunity.